Hey, Chicago, it's me, Mark Marin. I'm coming to your city August 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th at the Main Stage Theater. It's an amazing venue. Had a great time the last time I was there. You should come out. It's going to be a blast. Go to MainStage.com, M-A-Y-N-E, Stage.com for tickets and info. Come on, Chicago. Let's hang out. Do it. Are we doing this? Really? Wait for it. Are we doing this? Wait for it. How? What the fuck? WTF. And it's also, eh, what the fuck? What's wrong with me? It's time for WTF. What the fuck? With Mark Marin. Okay, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck, buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fucking knots? What the fuck, Nicks? Going old school. What the fucksters? Yeah, how about that? This is Mark Marin. This is WTF. I am sick. I am congested and sick. Damn it. You go a while, you think you kick them, you beat them. The bugs, the viruses, and then bam, head full of snot. That's where I'm at. Head full of snot, voice is scratchy, don't know how much you can tell, but I'm just sharing that with you. I'm sharing that with you at the top of the show here. Today on the show, John Oliver from The Daily Show, thrilled that uh, I got to talk to John. Great guy, funny guy, decent person. Not out here in L.A. very often. We did the interview at 7.30 in the morning. That goes on record as being the earliest interview I have ever done in my garage. We were both barely awake. Felt like we woke up together. Wasn't that awkward, but you know what I'm saying. You get the idea. Uh, A couple of things before we move into my stuffy head. Tonight, for the first time, I will be on Chelsea Lately. Don't know what to expect. Do not really uh, run in those circles. I don't know anything about pop culture for the most part, unless it comes through someone else, usually the woman sitting on my couch at her iPad saying, Oh, my God! Tom Cruise got divorced, and Katie Holmes are getting, oh, my God. And then I'm like, what? Oh, is that happening? Oh, good to know. She, My girlfriend, Jessica, is basically my portal to the pop culture world, so maybe she'll uh, team up with me and put things into context for this Chelsea Lately break. Uh, Also, tomorrow and Saturday, we'll be in Nashville at Zany's. If you have not got tickets for that, I would. It'll be good. It's always interesting for me to travel down south there. Also, today we're sponsored in part by Comedy Bang Bang every Friday at 10 p.m., 9 central on IFC. Comedy so nice they banged it twice. That's right, with host Scott Ackerman and band leader Reggie Watts, both of whom have been on this show, by the way. The first season is still going strong, so if you haven't jumped on board yet, now's your chance. It's an absurd and hilarious show with some of the biggest names in comedy. This Friday, Ed Helm shows off his banjo and animal noise-making skills. Bob Duca, one of the funniest characters in the world, stops by to read his latest list of ailments. And infamous daredevil Level Knevel performs one of his greatest feats. All that plus special guests Owen Burke, Jimmy Pardo, and Harris Whittles. And don't forget to tune in to a new episode of Bunk at 10.30 on IFC right after comedy Bang Bang. So watch that, Bob Duca. Seth Morris doing the Bob Duca bit. Man, that's fucking hilarious. I got to give him a call. So let's move into it. Let's move into what is happening. What is happening? Breaking Bad. I am so fucking thrilled that that is back. I cannot tell you how many tweets and how many emails uh, inquiring or drawing attention to the fact, though I didn't see it, that Walter White at the opening of the season premiere of Breaking Bad looked like me. Did not even register, I guess because I'm not uh, you know, donning the full beard, but I'm flattered. But uh, stop asking me if I know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm right there with you. I'm just so thrilled to be back in the world of Breaking Bad. It's kind of interesting when you know reality and, and what you're watching on television kind of yeah, it doesn't converge. But I, I started thinking about you know, narratives that, you know, what happens in life. You know, what has closure, what doesn't have closure. I'm watching Breaking Bad. I'm compelled by Breaking Bad. In the middle of Breaking Bad, my cat, LaFonda, almost as if she was presenting it, uh, started throwing up in the living room, just started gagging. And this is not a pukey cat. And there was a moment there where she, cat vomit came out of her mouth, but she was so shocked by it 
that it seemed to frighten her, and my cat LaFonda was running in fear from her own act of puking, which I've never seen before. But in thinking about puking, I've experienced before. It's one of those things where you're like, I have no control over this. Why isn't it stopping? It's horrible. Can I run from the experience that is emitting out of me? So I saw Fonda do this, and in my mind, of course, you know, anthropomorphizing as I do, she was embarrassed and ashamed and frightened at what she couldn't control. Who hasn't felt that? So I have to pause Breaking Bad, and then I go back to the bedroom to see if she's okay. I don't know if this is the beginning of something awful, but cats puke. They puke. But there she was in a corner, you know, by herself. You know, Monkey was looking at her, which in in judgment, I thought. And I was sitting there going, are you okay? Are you okay? And I... I actually feel like she was embarrassed that that uh, that she was embarrassed that she threw up and that uh, that she was you know forced to uh, appear as out of control of that. And it took her a few minutes and she got up on the bed and she was distrusting of me. I saw the look in her face. It's like, you know, uh, that was horrible. It was embarrassing. And 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 fuck you for seeing that. That was what I got from her. Fuck you for seeing me in that position like I had any you know control over that. But she eventually relaxed, and there was nothing wrong with her. In the immediate narrative of my cat running from her own vomit and then you know, going to the bedroom and processing it, uh, you know, there was transcendence and humility and, and closure. Also along the same lines of Breaking Bad, if I could be so bold, I've got a fucking cold, and somehow or another I've got it in my head that Sudafed is the best cold medicine. And there's no reason to think that. So I had to sort of track that thought in my mind. Why is Sudafed the best cold medicine? But not just Sudafed, the good stuff, the good Sudafed, the real Sudafed. Why have I decided that's the best cold medicine? You know why? Because I got to go to the pharmacy and ask them for it. And in some places, sign for it. Or in some places, show my uh, my driver's license for Sudafed. There's something about the uh, the uh, the jolt of of actually buying something that could be used for something uh, addictive and exciting and evil. Just that, you know, being part of, of buying something that if there was much of it could be used for the evil drug that is meth, that I, I just want to have proximity to that. It's ridiculous. There's plenty of other cold medicines. Some of them are even better than others, better than Sudafed. But no, man, I want to risk it. I want to push the envelope and sign for my cold medicine. Because that's how I roll. Ridiculous. Okay, you know what time it is now. Sorry to interrupt, but it's uh, dildo time. It's vibrating time. It's condom time. It's dirty movie time. It's lubricant time. It's Adam and Eve time. Go to adamandeve.com. Get 50% off almost any item. Free bonus gift. Three free DVDs. Free shipping, adamandeve.com. Enter WTF at the checkout. Do yourself a favor, will you? I keep getting emails. I get a lot of grateful emails from women who get new vibrators. I get grateful emails from men who buy bulk condoms, Catholics. I get grateful uh, emails from uh, from people who say, you know, I never thought I would do this, and uh, now I'm doing it. You know, whatever, fill in the blanks. I got a thing that moves and vibrates, and I put some stuff on it, and I put it in there, and the thing, and then everybody, you know, laughs and cries and shakes and jiggles. That's what I'm offering you. And I'm offering you 50% off almost any item that can do any number of those things. Scream, uh, enjoy, relief. Enter WTF at the checkout. Have fun with that. Because, look, I just woke up too, man. I don't know whose idea this was. So, you know, it's, it's an intriguing talking at this time of the morning is, you know, an intriguing concept. <laughs> and I challenge anyone to start this earlier. <laughs> I, I tell you, I think this is the first time I've done it. Yeah. Well, yeah. who's who's the closest to 7.30 a.m.? Who? I, I think I did closest? it. I, no, I think I did it at 10 a.m. once. Really? On a Sunday, though. So I've set a this, new bar by yeah. two and a half hours. Yeah, this is uh, this is Wednesday. I mean, Sunday at 10 a.m. I, mean, I can see that. <laughs> so I, I challenge someone to start at a time that's got a no, six in I, front of it. No, I, I, okay. All right. Maybe someone will take that challenge. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who. John Oliver is here at the... Uh, I'll tell you, not that it makes a difference 
when you're going to listen to it or, or what you think the reality of the situation is here. But it's it's seven, it's not even 7.30. We're early. Yeah. 7.30 a.m. So do you want... That is... <laughs> Well, this is this is this is the kind of time that functional people get up and do things. No, I know, I know. And now look at us. Is this an hour that you're familiar with? I mean, what do you? What yeah, is... unfortunately, it is. Because, oh, so, yeah, because you're showered, I, you were clean. I have to you, go. Thank you. You know, I, I didn't I didn't shower. I just wet my hair. Thank I you. I just I, I slightly resent the surprise in your voice when you say you're clean. <laughs> Well, that, but I'm just going to try and take that for the compliment that it your, actually is. Your teeth are probably brushed, everything. No, they're not probably brushed. They're definitely brushed. That is, that is a line that I'm not willing to cross in the morning, and I haven't been since I was 11 years old. The discipline is what makes you what you are, <laughs> basic I think. Basic physical discipline. It is basic, but I am, I'm not floss, willing to... Floss? Did you floss? Yeah, I, I floss a little bit, you know. A little bit. What does that mean? Well, it means just what I said. It means a little bit, you know, you, you do it. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a tenacious exercise, my but, flossing. But every day? You know, all right. Okay, let's, uh, that, no, no, well, let's let's say well, let's say once every two days. <laughs> let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once 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 every two days I floss. Well, that's not regular flossing. So I mean, I just see already I found a weakness. You see that? See, you're vulnerable. It's seven thirty. You you were uh, sort of like I. Of course, I brush my teeth. Right but now, the flossing. Know, what you, and you say like, I've already lied to you. <laughs> yeah, you lied, and then you, you went back on the lie, <laughs> and now it's wide open. Well, no, now now I think we're just differing over our definition of the, the word regular, because I think once every two days is regular. Okay, now, I, I'm, I know I'm coming with a British concept of dental hygiene there, but once every two. You days... Know, I wasn't even going to go there, but I. Yes, I mean, you were. No, I wasn't. I, I was not going to do the British teeth. What's mm-hmm. the issue? Well, it's thing. just a I, different. It's just a different concept. But what is it about British teeth? Is it genetics? I mean, <laughs> it's not genetics. I think it's more like a. I think it's more. Obviously, you know, we have a national health service. In right. I mean, you, you guys have been so around. So you go to the doctor mm-hmm. when you have to. Not right. when you feel you should, or as Americans, all the time. Well, that's why that's one of the uh, the concerns about a national health service here in America. Yeah, because you go too much. Is that that people, is, there's no question. That's people true. Would you sleep go too much in front you of the take clinic. Take too many drugs. Yeah, yeah. you're overprescribed for everything. Are you talking to me? Well, I'm, t- I'm talking both to you in, as and someone America? who embodies America's attitude towards healthcare. Because I'm fairly sure that you probably go to the doctor. No, too I much. don't. I'm, I'm horrified. I, really? You know, no, I won't go. You in just the, you're just worried about it all the time. No, I worry about things. My approach is like, well, that hurts. I'll see if it goes away. I learned uh-huh. that because I learned that if you go to the doctor and you're like, what is this? A lot of times they're like, I don't know. You want to wait it out. So I go ahead and tell myself to wait it out. And most of the time it passes. Yeah, you're more British than you think you are. I think. Is that how that works? Well, that then? kind of repression of reality and uh, your own emotional reaction to something is something that is quintessentially British. You're... I never knew I had that. Yeah, well, congratulations. Well, now, now I feel like I have, uh, like I'm emotionally protected somehow. <laughs> you, well, yeah. <laughs> that I can move through the world you're with... You're protected from yourself, yeah. not from reality, but from, from yourself. I can move through the world with sort of a faux confidence. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And that is how we conquered the world. <laughs> <laughs> you just embodied the history of the British Empire in one beautiful sentence. But there was a determination there. There was a spirit was moving, of victory. moving gentlemanly through the world with a faux confidence. <laughs> it was literally turning up to India and saying, that thing would look nice over there, and I think I can help you with other stuff. Do you know what? I'll do this. Okay with you? No? Does this gun mean anything? Yeah. Well, I, well that's, a, that's a question. Like, I, I've always assumed in my life that, that British people were actually had their shit more together than Americans. But I, I find as time goes on, it's not true. Yeah. They just, they just stifle much more things. Oh, definitely. We're, uh, we're emotional volcanoes. Yeah. You know, well, you're stuffers. You stuff it down, and then hopefully... Where does it blow up, though, John? Where is that happening for you? On, in the car? Are you screaming no, in the no, car? No, no, no. Collectively, it blows up during any royal events. You see that. No, well, British people will express emotion at moments of public celebration. So we'll do it through sport. Yeah. We'll do it through, you know, you saw sport. the Jubilee. Yeah. People were acting completely emotionally, irrationally during that. They don't care. Did you go for that? Did you go over there? No. Why not? Because I don't care. Do you not really care? Yes. I don't care. You see, and you'll find most British people don't care. But, but most... That is displacement emotion. You know, like when Diana died... Well, we got to bring that up. People were people were sad about that. People were sad, but it was more. I I really think it was more people mourning loved ones that have passed on that hadn't (laughs) for generations. That they that that they had not properly (laughs) mourned for because they hadn't been through that emotional process. Unexplored grief. She becomes the lightning rod for 
everyone you've known who's died over the last sure, few that's years. A, well, that's so. That's the Jesus idea, you know. I mean, she, she was died our, for everyone. She was our Lady Jesus. <laughs> lady Jesus. Yeah. But no, but you're telling me that if I were to hold up a picture of Queen Elizabeth, it would do nothing. It would. Nothing. No, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that there wouldn't be a deep stirring somewhere. Because that's my queen, Mark. That, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, honestly, I wouldn't, on. I wouldn't really care. No, I know you wouldn't care, but I yeah. mean, there's, but really, but it seems like that that not caring was sort of an active decision. You grew up with that. It's we not. Don't, it's not because it's. She's it's, like water in in uh, in England on some level, isn't she? I don't have any any powerful reaction against her either. You know, there are Republicans, you know, there are anti-monarchists in England, right. who want her gone. Right. I think I. What they I want a new on, system? Do they? Well, they just want her <laughs> gone. I think they fi they find that she, they find her presence irritating. <laughs> well, see, she's been there since most of you longer than you've been alive. Certainly, that's definitely Twice sixty years. Yeah, that was the whole point of the silver jubilee. No, I get it. I get 60 it. Sixty years yeah, without yeah. dying. Still, once. still, <laughs> still alive. That's a human yeah. achievement. It is. It's pretty good. Yeah. Sixty years is raining, and she's like a hundred and ten. Right? How old is she? She's ninety-seven. No, she's 90, not ninety-seven. Eighty something. No, have some respect. I'm trying see, to. Now, now you're making. <laughs> it's okay for me to say this. <laughs> oh, really? you don't get to say this. Okay. Stuff. Yeah. What is with that old lady? Hey. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> that old lady. God, you, you see, but by criticizing her, you're now making me more proud of it. Now, now, yeah, if you yeah, show me a picture yeah. of her, I'd probably just automatically stand up and yeah. salute. Yeah. <laughs> without even knowing what fully what my uh, motions were. I know you're like minutes away from colonizing my garage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. Get out. <laughs> so. All right. You come from uh, England because there's a lot of things people don't know about you because not unlike many British people, you sort of push it aside and yeah. just plow on with your ideas about uh -huh. things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> uh, you know, you thought, you, you thought, oh, this is going to be easy. We'll just go, go ahead and talk about bullshit for a while. No, but I don't know that uh, anyone knows. I don't know anything about you, really. Mm -hmm. You just uh, sort of appeared on our soil. Uh, you know, with a with a career, you know, which upsets some people. Um, not me. What, by I, some people, let's let, no, let, no. let's 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 just let's just try and move some people to me. <laughs> Every time you say some people, just we'll both imagine the word uh, me. Okay, so we, when I try to picture, when you say America, you mean me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. I get it. I get how this works. No, but I mean, uh, well, how old are you now? Thirty-five. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It is. We, you know, with the flossing thing, now everything's vague. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 35 actual years. <laughs> and that, yeah, that, yeah, that concept of the calendar is something we probably both agree on. Yeah. 35 yeah. human years. Good. And, uh, but it, where, where part of England were you born in? Not that it's necessarily going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to go like, oh, of course. But, no, you're not going to, you know, this is going to be me. I'm sure, but no, I will no, walk you through it. No, oh. but I'm going to, I'm going to hit something. Okay. Uh, all well, right. I was born in Birmingham. Yeah, in the middle is my family from Liverpool. Ah, see, no, the Beatles. The, North. That's the right. Beatles. There you go. You hit on something. I think the Beatles. You, I think you feel like you hit on more than you actually did there. <laughs> and uh, then I was raised in Bedford, which is about an hour north of. But London. did your parents see the Beatles like early on? No, but they had Beatles albums. Sure. <laughs> so yeah. did I. Yeah. Well, there you go. So you, you and my parents have that in common. I will say <laughs> that you, my parents, and literally millions upon millions of people have that in common. But they were close to the source. They, they were, were right close to the source. They were yeah. at the well. Yeah. But yes. like, but Liverpool uh, is a, a a working class uh, yes. suburb or yeah. part. Well, no, you can say city. It's a working class city. It's a city in the yeah, country it's not a suburb, of, of it's an England. Actual city. Yeah. It's not like a suburb. It's a large industrial port town. Okay. Who, when the shipping industry died, the city died for a time it. died with it. Yeah. Sure, we have a lot of those around here that you yeah. travel to and uh -huh. mock. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, I don't know how you managed to inflect so much in one word. That's, that's my gift. Yeah. It, it stifled my career for years, that power. Yeah. You, you'd be <laughs> so good at voiceovers if you could monetize contempt. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But what is uh, where you grew up? How, how was, uh, like, what, what was the business, the family business? Uh, well, my, my mom and dad are teachers or that's were teachers. Yeah. So you were, well, that's good. You were taught early on that education is important. Yes. Now I'm projecting that on you. No, that's, that is, that's a lucky guess. And you were, like, I assume a good student? I was a good, be I was, honest, I was, be I was, I was, no, I'm trying to be honest. I was, I think I appeared better than I was. I was good at bullshitting. I was good at 
papering over cracks of knowledge. And I also went to quite a bad school, so I was the I was uh, in the, you know the top stream of. This could be your career resume as well. I mean, what, you know, you're bullshitting, to, yeah. you're appearing better. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that Britishing, yeah. confidence. Yeah, but, but, but you yeah, know, I went, to, I went, my the school I went to was quite rough. So, uh, I was. Uh, did your parents teach at that school? No, 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 no. What did? What kind of? What was? Uh, what, what did they teach? Uh, my dad. Uh, my dad. He. Well, he was. He became a head teacher by the time. Uh, Is there an American equivalent of that? Principal. He was a principal. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, so he was hated. Well, that's why I didn't want to go to his school. <laughs> he wanted me to go there because it was a much better school, right? But I wanted to go with my friends to the school my friends were going to, and also I wanted to go. I think, understandably, to a school that didn't have my dad in it. <laughs> yeah, but we had to play my dad's school at sport, and I remember, I remember we played rugby against his dad, uh, my uh, against uh, my dad's school, and yeah. I was in the scrum at the start of the game. Yeah, and. Uh, this, it's an oddly intimate thing. It's men grabbing hold of each other in a scrum and pushing. Yeah. I remember one kid from his school saying, oh, you're John Oliver, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, yes. And I hadn't quite got to the S of yes. Yeah. This fist <laughs> <laughs> just punched me in the face. Like, really? Okay. So I, I think I made a good school choice. <laughs> that's that's for your father. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what you got yeah, the hit? That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to pay for the crimes of the elder. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, well, that well, that was he. Uh, do you know if he was a a, a liked principal? As I much? think he was actually very good at it because he yeah. was um he was a social worker in Liverpool, and he he never went to um uh you know to university. He didn't have a he didn't have many qualifications, mm -hmm. and he the school that he went to when he went to principalize it mm -hmm. uh, was uh, extremely rough, and he kind of turned it around. He was always interested in going to the worst schools and helping uh the roughest kids he was yeah. always interested in the kids that needed help the most oh my god he's, he's a social worker at heart rather than we should pitch this television educator. show it sounds like one of those great shows where you know you got all the ruffian kids and then the principal that seems kind of strict at first comes in and all the kids are like Meh. yeah yeah and then like you know he he, he builds uh, their trust and loyalty yeah he and didn't look like michelle pfeiffer it wasn't yeah. that kind of thing no 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 but I, and I'll, I'll get a sense in your head that you're expecting like, them just to be young street British sure. urchins who yeah. burst into song at every moment. Well, that's not the case. <laughs> he wasn't, they just sigh and feel yeah. sad. Yeah. There is no, uh, it's, can I have some more? <laughs> no, that's right. They didn't pickpocket their way. <laughs> no? No. Uh, all right. So, wait, so, but a social worker, that's pretty noble. I mean, was this something, like in, in the world that you come from, which is, you know, the old world, mm -hmm. Uh, Not the oldest, but yeah, certainly old. Yeah. Certainly older than here. Sure. No, you have walls in England that are older than our country. That's true. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I'm very. Although worried. I was just, I was just in Rome, and oh they, my God. they, they beat fuck? us. And how great is it there, it's man? It's so great. Did you go to the Vatican? Yep. Isn't it amazing? Wow. You're like, wow, there's yeah, a lot they, of... You, they're making a big statement. Yeah, and that they, statement is, look at this. Yeah. Did we not do well? Yeah. Believe or don't believe, but we kind of won. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's that too, but I also found that in Italy, when you go to even smaller towns, that they have huge cathedrals yeah. that a lot of work and artisanry went into. Yeah. And I realized when I was there, because I'm not a believer, I wasn't brought up a believer, I'm a Jew, but I, I didn't even believe in that. But when you stand you know, in a cathedral... That is that awesome. You buckle a little it bit. It gives you pause. Yeah, you're like, oh my god! If I were just a, a frightened working right. a peasant, I would walk in there and just drop to my knees. Yeah, and, go, and this that's is now. glorious. That's yeah. that's making you feel that way now. Yeah, three hundred years ago, I don't think there's much argument there. That's you'd walk in and think, I think I'm wrong yeah. about this because I've never seen anything like this in my life. Oh yeah, they just blast you with mm. in, in all, and they they got the best architects, the best artists to just build these fucking mind fucking. Uh, you know, things. Yeah, yeah. I was to make you doubt your skepticism in an almighty. Cause you that's think, right. You think, Who else could do? Because it barely, well, it barely seems fathomable that mankind could do it. But I've, I've flipped around because I used to. Uh, I remember uh, a while back going to Milan, Milan Cathedral and having yeah. that feeling because it was mm -hmm. at a weird time. Like there was a, there was incense in the air and there were literally monks doing some plain song in there. And that, that was where it hit me. You think, uh oh. Yeah, I think I think I've got some thinking to do. Then you get outside and you kind of sh shake it off. Yeah, and, oh, I, th I think, I think yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I think I'll, having gone through that, that when I was at the Vatican, it is more like an absolutely overwhelming 
uh, sensation of what mankind is actually capable of. It actually became less religious and more wow. Yeah. See this, what you can do in the name of God? You see what you can Look do with... Look at this toilet. See what you can make people do with <laughs> yeah. fear. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I found that uh, when I was at the Vatican, because I traveled around Italy, that, like, the Vatican, in terms of the cathedral there, I was like, it's all right. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's definitely not the best. It's not the best. There was a little, I, I, in my recollection, there's more gold around. Like, it's a little more streamlined. Like, yep. it, it's... Uh, it doesn't have the same ancient feeling. They keep it up a little better somehow. Although the uh, the little four prong pulpit, mm-hmm. I believe that's not the technical Catholic. That is pretty amazing. The you know, four pronged pulpit. Yeah, you know where the Pope stands with that twisting black. Yeah. Oh yeah. With columns. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ay, 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 ay. yeah. 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 There, there is so some he- rough. heavy mind fucking yeah. going on. And it's there. On, oh, and it's only built on the top of St Peter's tomb. That's all. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. In case you're wondering, that yeah. guy underneath. Yeah. Even, St. even Peter. if you're, but per- still, doubt away. <laughs> Even, even if your brain tends towards skepticism, there's such an ancient ritual, a uh, series of rituals in place where you're like, you know, whether this stuff uh, you know, actually does anything or not, it does. Yeah. It does. Like, there, it, it's almost cult-like. Yeah. I mean, is there any argument to be made that the, the original crew around Jesus was a cult and then, uh, you know, the, this is all built on a, a series of strange, layered historical rituals yeah. that over time have... Uh, I don't know. What about the basement of the Vatican? Have you heard those stories? Like, what do they got down there? You want to hear a weird story? Carter Castera, he was an artist, and he did a piece of art that uh, it was neon lights that would flash, you know, Jesus' face and then the devil's face. It'd go on and off, like, mm-hmm. like that. The Vatican bought it. That there was a period where I think the what? Vatican was no, buying religious-themed art just to get it out of circulation, put it in the basement. That's I I tell you they are very threatened. Even this is in the last twenty years, twenty five years, threatened by the power of other uh, ritualized artifacts that attack them. Like I, I bet you, piss Christ, that's in the basement. But I, st- but I still think that they, I still think that they were smart enough to know that that concept of you know an otherworldly fear of what is underneath this building is something that is intentional. Because you know they have grills in all the floor. Uh, when you, Barbecuing when you, when you, grills? In, no, just like oh. as you go in, as you go in, and you. Uh, as you as you're looking at, it, you think, oh, that's obviously they were, you know, they were thinking about ventilation, and yeah. that makes sense, right? But then you find yourself peering down, and you think, I'm sure there's part of them thinking, well, if you put grills in there, people are going to think, what's down there? Sure, yeah, Th- that's the dark part. Yeah, that's you don't the... need to know what's down there. Yeah, that's where the power is coming. Yeah, now you want to want to put anything in this bowl? <laughs> yeah. I think just as an emotional cover bet, I do now. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird though, right? Yeah. That like that there's not it's not a paranoia, but you assume that because of how old it is, and then you go everywhere in Rome. There's uh, there's pieces of saints. There's little bits of yeah. uh, cut off fingers, heads, ears. And, yeah, and people have done amazing things Wait, under the just, cosh of complete terror. Look at the Sistine Chapel. That thing was absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. You look at the that that wall to the side. Yeah. And you you realize that that's one man. Yeah. Uh, Michelangelo putting himself through hell. Yeah. Physical and emotional Laying hell. Laying on the scaffolding on his death. Yeah. Yeah. Going through this. And it, there's that uh, this, uh, portrait in one of the corners, the way he's supposedly done himself as a portrait. Mm-hmm. Just as, a, as an old... He painted himself as an old right. man with his hand over mm-hmm. his face. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I, uh, I didn't see the Pope, and, it, and I was surprised at how huge that po- the whole Vatican City was. Yeah. And uh, Look, they've done well. Yeah, and you waited they online. How long did you wait online? Did you have any cachet? I'm like John John Oliver from the Daily Show. Nothing. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, the yeah. Vatican yeah. really respects yeah. basic cable humor shows. Yeah, they just, you just get waved straight right in right by in. a Swiss guard. <laughs> yeah, come on in. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> British guy this yeah. way. Yeah, the Pope's so waiting. Know your name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, actually, it wasn't that bad. A, did the Pope perform while you were there? Although people were cutting the line. Which, oh, again, yeah. that seems a bold move when you're going into one of the most iconically religious well, places on earth. Yeah, but they also know they get in, they ask for forgiveness, done deal. What are you going to do? They're that's, cool. That's the, they're just getting a few shots in before they make that's it That's the weak the... spot of the Catholic Church, yeah, yeah. the Achilles heel. Yeah, that's the trick. Yeah. You can never be pure, but yeah. you can always apologize. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so what else did you find moving in Rome? A lot of good fountains. Yeah. What's the one from... Uh, Trevi. Uh, the Trevi Fountain from yeah. Dolce Vita, yeah, right? It was pretty, it, it, that wasn't. It was the Colosseum more that I thought. Oh, was wasn't it. that great? You sort of got to go to the outside of town, and and uh, yeah. And I wasn't expecting it to be quite as mind blowing to be inside. It's all mind blowing, dude. I mean, it's yeah, like it, right, it really knocks you around. Just standing in this thing that is still upright, yeah, to some extent, yeah, and just imagining what those walls have seen. Oh God, yeah. And even when they even when they start describing stuff, saying, "And this is where." two lions would fight in the middle sometimes. And there's part of you which thinks, 
yeah, I could watch that. Yeah, of course you could watch. I mean, it. I know, I know, we shouldn't do that anymore. And I, you know, the, most of me doesn't want to watch it, but part of me thinks, yeah, I could watch two lions fight. That no, now we've amazing. replaced that with 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 sad, pathetic people who try to dig themselves out of their own trash yeah, and maybe not... find cats. Well, that's it. also walking around Rome. I've got you, you can kind of see why Italy has had a problem with fascism because it's it's built around exceptionalism so much. They have these buildings which were designed and still are designed to say this was the greatest moment in humanity. We were the best. Yeah. And then it's tied with the fact that there is still this kind of emotional idiocy in the country. Because I went straight from the Coliseum back to the hotel and turned on the TV and there was a game show and there were two guys on it in blackface. No. Yep. So that's still going on. Yeah. So you think, oh, there you go, Italy. This yeah. is why you had problems. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> These why... two things together... <laughs> That's why every place has or a problems. Molotov cocktail. Sure, sure. There's a you know there's the the the, the powerful class. Yeah. And then there are the rubes. Yeah. And some of them are angry. Yeah. And they, you know it behooves uh, the power to keep them stupid. So you had the Vatican and you had uh, you know the yeah. other thing going on. Uh, the forum. They were, there was that bit where the the Temple of the Vestal Virgins, mm -hmm. where the, those women who would for ten years had to keep this flame alight. Yeah. And that was all they had to do. And if it went out, they were uh, burnt to death. And you, you think well, that's barbaric. And then, then some part of me was going back to the head of the guy going, look, all I, all you had to do was keep this alight. I asked one thing of you. <laughs> that's it. Just keep the flame going. I don't think that's too much. <laughs> and that, and you couldn't do that for 10 years. And then you, then you're done. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and, and, oh, well, two things, I guess, because they yeah. weren't allowed to have sex. Either, but you know, I guess you don't want the distraction of boyfriend in this. But somebody right? fell asleep on the job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you, you rugby—that's your sport? No, soccer. Not at all. I just play. Yeah, soccer's my. Don't go to me. I don't even like saying that word. Soccer. I would. I would rather be misunderstood. It's football. No, I understand what yeah. you think it is. Yeah. Um, well, no, we did it first. I mean, that's just. It's a, a different game. Yeah, it, that's right. And it's called soccer. No, it is not. It's, well, you're telling me that, that soccer, football wasn't soccer to begin. Where did soccer come from, smart guy? Soccer came from, was before rugby, because I think rugby was invented with guys playing soccer and one of them picked up the ball and ran with it. Yeah. At a place called rugby in England. Right, and everybody got excited, like something new. They, they decided to bend the rules a little bit and make an entirely new sport. Yeah, I just think, I think basically like... he picked it up, everyone got annoyed, attacked him, and they thought, yeah. there's a sport in this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not a sports guy. I'm glad that you seem like a, a very uh, you know, reasonably minded person around uh, competitive things. And, and I, I am a sport. I love sport. It, it, but but you learn that like at some point because you uh, were in school and you and this happens in America too. But this is just not my experience. Like I was always everything was very life or death for me. That uh, if uh, if I was on a team that was losing, it was probably my fault or my right. bad luck. And uh, and it was it, teamwork never worked for me. I never uh -huh. understood you know the joy of competing with a bunch of other men and, and owning losing as much as you own winning. Yeah, I think I th there are moments in sport, especially when you're a kid, mm -hmm. that really hurt. If you, I remember missing a penalty uh, when I was 12 years old yeah. in a, in a you know, just like a local competition, and it probably took me three years to get over it. Really? Yeah, it, I just felt like at that point it was the worst thing that had ever happened to me, even though it wasn't. What, can you explain to me what that means? What, the just, penalty thing? Oh, it's, so you know, it's like a it's like a shootout in hockey. Yeah. So it's like the game is on the line. It's just uh, it's been a so draw the a free whole way shot. through. Yeah, you get a free shot, and it's it, each team gets five of them, yeah. and then you know the so team it should be a no brainer, right? But it's all built around individual failure, right? Because then you are the person who you has blew. lost it, right? In that single moment, that right. single kick of the ball. yeah, yeah, I understand this, and it it absolutely broke me. Did did you get uh, were your teammates like you? They didn't care, no, right? They didn't care because we're children. Yeah, I think they would think, oh yeah, well you know we'll just do something else later and tomorrow. But for something, and uh, my only redemption for that was that years years and years later at the Edinburgh Festival, uh, there was this uh, charity football match uh, that I played in, and I had to take a penalty, yeah. and I scored it. You and can... I nearly burst into tears. Closure. Yeah. Full circle. It was, it was, there was an internal closure. <laughs> no, and no one knew what you were going No through. one knew. And we're probably concerned as to why in this equally meaningless game, there was a, a guy who doesn't cry visibly on the edge of tears. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. <laughs>
with dumb. <laughs> It's, it's weird that there are things like that we carry around like that. Well, actually, in that same, game, I guess yeah. I think that goes. To, uh, my, uh, in that, I, I scored mm. another goal in that game. I mm-hmm. think I remember, and we we won. And my dad was watching. My dad always wanted me to be a footballer more than he wanted me to be anything else, like a professional. And football? to play for Liverpool, yeah. And as a joke, I kind of I took my shirt off like you know sometimes footballers do that celebration so yeah. i took my shirt off and i like, ran up into the crowd bit yeah. and gave it to my dad yeah as kind of a joke yeah and he was moved <laughs> you know i've never i've not really seen him move much in his life and i think he realized this is as close as i could give him this is a, the son that he wanted <laughs> this is a comedian which you know no parent wants <laughs> yeah but for one day in a meaningless moment being a footballer Giving the T-shirt to him, but you were doing. And he, it. he kept it at home. It's a, yeah, it's he, a has home. It. he has it. That's beautiful because yeah. it was a joke. It was a joke, but there was something else going on there. I think. Sure, I had he, my he, moment he, of redemption, he, and in a sense, he had an acceptance of the disappointment I felt in this boy. <laughs> he has done the best he could, which was not enough. <laughs> But th- well, I think well, I've realised we've maxed out, and now we can both move on. I think there was the same sense in his mind of, it is done. How old were you? Then, I guess, it was Edinburgh, so I must have been like 25, 26. Oh, so, okay, so that was that was where your father, that's where he saw he, you? Yeah, he, he, was, he was up in Edinburgh as well, and they just came to see this game. They didn't come to see your show? Oh, they, uh, <laughs> I think they did, but I don't like them coming to see you. Stand up. But he came to see the game? Yeah, because he... That means, but I understand. I completely understand that. But you, but you, but yeah, at twenty five, you're probably a comedian for what five years already. How old? Yeah, yeah. So he, he wasn't. He just knew you were going to be playing no, football. No, every time and... I used to go back at Christmas, he would say, like we'd say, he'd like to ask how comedy was going, and then he would just remind me of the conversation. Of, of course, you know this is not what I wanted for you. <laughs> no, I'm really he's going great. But I remember, remember that I wanted you to be a footballer. I know. Remember that's also what I wanted. Yeah. But both of us have to. Somehow accept that that is, and then I couldn't even say the word over because that, you know, I haven't still still now I haven't fully oh accepted that. But it's so so that's a genuine. It's it's interesting to me because a father who's a social worker and a teacher and somebody who appreciates yeah. uh, learning and, yeah. and and moving in that direction yeah. really just wanted you to be a thug. Yeah, he just <laughs> well, and that's it. even now I know that I probably wouldn't get along with. The culture of footballers. Most footballers in England are assholes. No, you're, you know, your own team would beat you up. Yes. Well, and also, I'd probably feel socially uncomfortable around them. But there is still a child in me that wants. You got to understand. I went to when I when I, my dad first started taking me to games. Mm-hmm. I would wear to Liverpool games. I would wear. I would make him let me wear my full Liverpool kit. So this is me at eight, nine years old. My full Liverpool kit underneath whatever I was wearing, because there was a part of me as a child that felt if someone got injured on the field i'm ready they would just turn to the crowd and say does anyone have a kit so that we can carry on and i would say yes my name is john i'm eight years old and clearly somewhere in me i think that this is going to turn out well that this eight-year-old is going to be able to physically compete with this 29 year old super fit yeah athlete. But, but but that's the dream that's yeah. so that's that's touching i wish i had that i i didn't i didn't uh... I, wore, I wore cleats i wore cleats to the sure. game as well you're so ready you to go this clip clop of this yeah. eight-year-old kid going let's do this and your father let you do that because he thought like yeah this is going to happen he's this yeah, committed this, look, if this is what it takes i can see it yeah, now he can i can see him... it now i'll tell this story i'll tell this story <laughs> to journalists when i'm talking about my child that won the cup <laughs> And where was your mother on the, uh, during all this? Just, I think, at home with her head in her hands, going, what is wrong with these men? <laughs> what, but I have that, too. Do you find uh, that there's part of you uh, like uh, that equally has contempt for, uh, and not necessarily athletes, but the type of, like, the same thing that made you think that you weren't able gonna be, weren't going to be able to hang with this type of man? Yeah. You know, certainly in a group yeah. for very long yeah. without reprisal. Yeah. Where you, would right. be, you would be without found out. Without natural selection kicking in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, do you find that because uh, I'm I'm dealing with this on stage now? Not I, I mean I'm talking about mm-hmm. you know the idea of uh, masculinity. Yeah. That like there's because you're intelligent or because you didn't chose that way. There's a, a natural condescension there that you probably is unintentional because I'm sure you have respect for their skill set. Oh, I love it. Right. But uh, but so when if you were around them, if you got to sit with your favorite players, I couldn't do it. I met. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I met. By chance, David Beckham yeah. in uh, in Las Vegas. I was doing the Vegas Comedy Festival, 
and uh, w- w- was in a restaurant yeah. uh, with uh, uh, some friends of mine, and he was sitting at a table being not bothered by anyone because yeah. this is America and it's not the same cultural right. explosion not, around him. It's not him. that important. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the haircut was popular and, for a while. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I com- could not speak when I, I saw him. Really? Yeah. And then one of the guys with was actually his, uh, you know, worked with the agency that he was with and he said, I'll go and uh, let me go and talk to him. Yeah. I've actually met him a few times. Let me bring him over here. I was saying, please don't, please do not do that. Please do not do that. I can't do this. And he went, he brought him over. All my friends were kind of talking to him. Oh, nice to meet you, nice yeah, to meet you. Yeah. And, you know, he said, oh, Ed, Ed, nice to meet you, John, nice to meet you. I've yeah. heard you're a comedian. Yeah. And I just fell apart. Went, well, yes. <laughs> David, I really like it when you play football. <laughs> it was, it was, there was a pause. It was yeah. tense. All I knew, I knew that he was moving to Milan to yeah. play in the off-season with the team there. And so I just said, oh, hope you have a really good time in Milan. That seems like a good move for you. <laughs> And what did he say? He just said, oh, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah thanks very much. <laughs> and this, do you know what? This gets really embarrassing now. He's the, the guy who knew from his agency. He yeah. clearly asked him if he would sign something after the fact for me. Because about a week later, yeah. this uh, package turned up to my house and it was a football yeah. uh, with two John, nice to meet you, David Beckham on it. And I, I have it in a case in my office. <laughs> 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 it's sweet. Yeah. Is it or is it pathetic? <laughs> no, it's not pathetic. No. no. I think it's, it's a bit of both. Let's what? meet in the middle on that one. I mean, these guys are, are mythic, powerful yeah. people. They, yeah. they they represent... Well, especially especially Beckham, because he looks like, just going back to Roman statues, he looks like he's made of marble. He's perfect. Well, did, did you his feel... Only, his only Achilles heel is his voice. That's you... his only moment of weakness. Well, that's, but that makes... Voice. Yeah, but that, that but then I'm sure you can speculate about what that must have played in, in the part it played in making him what he was. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that, but I like that. Yeah. I like that, yeah. I like, like that. Like he had to transcend yeah, that I horrible like that. feminine voice. Yeah. <laughs> and and with show the, those with bastards. the artistry of his athleticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, but did you feel? Did you walk away from that encounter feeling like uh, the same way you felt when you missed the penalty? No, I, <laughs> I, no. Actually, I w- walked away from that encounter thinking that went exactly as well as I think it <laughs> was always going to. I, I don't think there was a way of me getting better control of my feelings. I've just I have a weak spot. And there's also there's no way like as a comic you meet another comic even no matter it's how fine, much yeah. you respect them you, you've got an in. But with him you know you've got I, a, I have no in. This we is, have nothing in common. <laughs> other than the country that we were born in. And and your dreams. Yeah, and but and the fact that <laughs> but unfortunately he must know that the fact we were born in the same country makes it even more aware that I cannot relate to him on a human level. He was much more comfortable with the American guys because they don't care about him. Yeah. I care about him. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I I wish there was some more you could do. Is there? A, maybe you could have dinner. But well, you, you know, could... you were talking about a show, you know, picking up a picture of the Queen. I would feel nothing. Mm. You show me a picture of David Beckham. Mm. I would clam mm. up a bit. You'd weep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Weep. I just say he looks really good. I remember that game. Yeah. Yeah. So good. he he was on the team that you liked. No, he wasn't. He was on England's team. No, yeah. No, I didn't. I well, who's your team? team? On. Liverpool. So you're a Liverpool guy yeah. to this day. Yeah. You, you inherit your team in in uh, England. And what now? Your your mother taught what? Music. Really? Yeah. Like like what did she play? Piano? Yeah, she played piano. She played uh, cello. Do you play piano? No. Well, uh, not really. I played you, the violin. You played the violin. Yeah. So you were you were really pulled in two directions, weren't you? Yeah, I was because I played <laughs> on all the school sports teams and I did drama and music as well. So I, I was the one thing that floated between those two worlds so i would turn up to like rehearsals for things with you know mud and blood on me yeah and i would turn up to uh you know sporting events with a violin case yeah. imagine which of those was more difficult <laughs> <laughs> you can wash the blood off you cannot make that violin case disappear it, it's too bad that your parents weren't more strict and made you play the violin because then you could have might have been a sports oh star. no they kind of did make me play the violin and and your contempt for that didn't drive you harder into sport or you, maybe yeah, you I, just, I, I I went as hard into sport as I could. So you just not, but I had physical. I wasn't good enough. You just weren't good. God, enough. I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud. Yeah, now. but that, I wasn't good enough. By it. yeah, I was never going to make my career as a professional footballer. Well, and, and like exactly what what year did you realize that? Probably about three years ago. <laughs> 
So it's still raw. It's still it's fresh. Really yeah, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. I'm sorry we hit upon this. Uh, you know, it's early too. I'm surprised you're not weeping. <laughs> so do you, do you ever uh, pick up the violin anymore? No, no, nothing. No, I couldn't because that, that wasn't as uh, I found that yeah. incredibly frustrating. Because the, the better and better you get playing the violin, the better music you get to play, and you realise how it should sound and you also realize you're never going to be able to make it sound like that. So you took two big hits. Mm. I mean, you know, the violin was probably first, that yeah. this is not... And well, that's no... the problem. You can, when you get good, because I, I, I maxed out where you could, be, like, in terms of grades, it's like grade one to eight, and I took grade eight, and I was bad. And I passed it, so, you know, technically, I was pretty good. But yeah, no feel for it. I knew I was bad. There was another girl uh, who, in... Uh, another uh, girl? In my school. Oh, a girl. And she, yeah, yeah she could... Uh, <laughs> it's really... <laughs> Now uh, now I, think we're we're both, I think we're both right again there. Uh, and she could, uh, yeah, she could really play. And I knew that I could practice for a thousand years and I was never going to make it sound like she could. Isn't it interesting what builds the comedic persona? Yeah. Is that like, you know, you were hit in the face with the realization that yeah. like... It was nothing but glass ceilings. Yeah. And yeah. they were lower than I would have liked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but the the sports thing, like you you know, you just genetically or whatever, you you kind of hit a wall with that. Yeah. But music, like yeah. theoretically, if you would have dedicated your life to it, no. Yeah. No, no. Too much Cause, you, yeah, because you. No, but also you realize that you just can't do it, especially with the violin, because you kind of it's it's not like exact keys. You know, you there, you know, the, it used to. I used to get so frustrated when I was practicing, especially like towards the end yeah. when I was you know, had really beautiful pieces of music, and yeah. you know how you want it to sound. And you know how they're supposed to and sound. And your body, your fingers and your hands can't do it. And, just and you, want... you just want to smash it, your violin into a wall. And, and you're raping a masterpiece. Yeah. That's the, the gift yeah. that music gives you. Yeah, you, you just can want... destroy yeah. a, a masterpiece. You just want someone to put their hand over your hand and say, stop it. Stop it. Let's go out and let's <laughs> bury this in the garden. You can't do the this. The dream and the yeah. instrument. Yeah. 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 My my moment of the end of my sporting career, and I've been talking about it on stage because I'm, I'm hung up. What did you play? I didn't play much of anything, but I, I'm not. I'm physically able to play things, but I, I teamwork is beyond me. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and losing is just uh -huh. horrifying. Yes, but uh, I was a chubby center fielder in Pee Wee Little League, oh, and uh, I, like, I yeah. like I like that. Yeah, I well because they kind of put you out there. Like my team was terrible. I was about ten. And I was kind of fat. I didn't want to be there. My mom just wanted me out of the house. Center fielder. So you have that almost movie cliche of a ball arcing through the air towards you. That's right. And That's too what much it was. time to think about it. That's right. Yeah. And and uh, it was my big moment because you know I was out there just kind of yeah. kicking the dirt, and I heard that sound, the 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 crack of the bat, and I look up and it's coming right at me, and I'm backing up, and I've <laughs> you know I've got that mixture of of complete fear of fucking up and also fear of the ball, but knowing that you know this is. I should have this. Yeah. And I'm backing up, and in my memory, there's a sprinkler. I'm not sure that there oh, was. Oh, no. And I fell down, and the ball hit me on the face. That's how, that's how I was, I had it. I was under it, as they say. And, uh, and then I was crying. I was crying on, in center field, not fielding the ball, not, not even following up my mistake with any action yeah. other than tears. Uh, you know, the team was disappointed. My yeah. coach was baffled and angry that, yeah. but he couldn't quite show it. Yeah. And, uh, and that was it. I think that that moment, that was like, it, it's a vector in my, uh, is, that, is that, I don't know how to use that, but that moment, everything went the other way. Yeah. No more sports, no more teams. Yeah. My mother was on my shit list. Yeah. Uh, and, and it just, it, it, I still haven't recovered from it. That's I'm literally fantastic. trying to process it on stage. Last night, I'm trying to write a bit where I walk, 10 year old mark off the field and tell him <laughs> what his future holds for him and why yeah. this moment is important yeah as and he looks at the floor and doesn't listen yeah yeah and, and he's crying yeah and he's crying that's yeah. fantastic yeah and that is i mean that is that's like a movie that my favorite movies are sports movies because those moments i love those moments where things go to slow motion and where there is sweeping music behind it but now I know in my life that I, I never, like, it be, because of that moment, I was not, I should have caught it. I didn't catch it. Yeah. I didn't get it. Yeah, you should have caught it. Right. But I didn't even care about the game. I'm not clear on how the well, game Well, that was probably operates. obvious to your teammates. You let them down. You sure. Lost that game. That's right. Uh, mm. That's right. And it, it was that, that moment where I realized, like, you know, I, you know I, I think that I can only blame myself. 
I think I, I didn't catch that ball. Oh, I can tell a... you, you can definitely only blame yourself. <laughs> that was entirely your fault. I right. Think, unless the, uh, uh, this hypothetical sprinkler that I think we both know was not there. That's right. But <laughs> I think the sadder thing is I might have done it on purpose. I mean, that's what no. I'm trying to find. No. That, that there was no. some part of me that was like, you know what? You don't I... get any control in that moment, Mark. No, but I... Right, okay, but the way I'm trying to spin it is like, hey, look, you know, any attention's attention. Oh, you know, yeah. So, was... so, so now the game is completely about me. I'm the crying man <laughs> in center field. So now it's like the game True. is stopped. Yep. We have the problem. Yeah. That kid. Now everyone has to deal with that kid. What's that's that right. kid's name? That's right. Exactly. Mark. My name is Mark. <laughs> Exactly. And I am leaving the field crying, and my mother's going to buy me ice cream. I won. Yeah. I won. And you will remember this day. <laughs> and if you don't, I definitely will. Exactly. Something happened here, kids. <laughs> and you don't understand it, and I don't understand it. But I'll work it out on stage one day. It sounds like there's a bit in it. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had known that it's taken me, what, 40 that's years. Great. Yeah. I'm, ser I'm seriously just processing yeah, it. Yeah, that's great. So when uh, did you go? You went to college where? Cambridge. Is is that the Cambridge? Yeah. Oh, so that's fancy. It was fancy. Yeah, I didn't particularly like it, but yeah. <laughs> did you have to wear an outfit? No. No. Th I mean, those days are over. Or those it those days are not entirely over. <laughs> yeah, those days are over, but there are some people there that are Consistent. not willing to accept that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. What is the structure of Cambridge? Because I know that I resent people who go to Ivy League schools here. Yep. Uh, but that seems to be even higher than that. Like, you know, that the Ivy League... You don't was, even have the class system. Sure, right. The Ivy League here was to uh, accommodate, you know, uh, a sort of subverted class system yeah. in this country yeah. where you're just shameless about it. No, this is it. The, oh, yeah. This is the upper class. Yeah, and so and I came from, uh, you know... From uh, Liverpoolians. Well, I came from, uh, you know, a state school, uh, you know, got quite a you know, bad state school and I felt very uncomfortable there almost all the time. Well, how how did you pull that off? Just on grades, or it was a gift, yeah, or it was some of, sort of affirmative action thing? Uh, that as well. Yeah. I'm afraid to say. I think they ha they have to hit a quota for how many. Yeah. You know what percentage of state school. Well, this kids. someone seems to be sort of gifted. Yeah. Somehow. Well, I, and I was definitely aware that <laughs> I was probably less smart than some of the other people there, but that I came from a school that they could tick a box. Uh huh. So, but, yeah. but but I was I was I was I was pretty smart. But I was I was not, I was not as smart as you know. I definitely had an imposter syndrome there in almost every level, but, intellectual but, but, and social. But aren't those a lot of those uh, a lot of the people their legacies, anyways? I mean, it, yep. it, 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 I have to assume there has to be a large contingent of not smart rich kids. Oh yeah, but so, they're but they're going to go on to do. Well, yeah, but I, that's I was going to say great things, not great things. Let's say profitable things. Yeah, they're going to go on to have money yes. still, you know, to to manage the money that they were born with. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I, with that in place, I mean, you, it must you must have been driven by some sort of spite. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I was fully driven by spite. I mean, but, but the first, but I did uh, I did comedy there a lot, and uh, the at Cambridge. Yeah, there's this group called the Cambridge Footlights, which is um, like, yeah, cause it's basically a comedy group. It's where so that was Monty you're in, so the, you, you were the uh, the lower class clown. That yeah, come, yeah. <laughs> that we've allowed into the school. Yeah, <laughs> and the guy I worked with a lot at college, this guy called Richard Iowardi. Yeah, and. Uh, I remember when he f when we met each other. We should I know who he is? Week. No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. He's um uh he's on a show called the IT Crowd. Oh yeah, in yeah, England. yeah. In, okay, yeah, yeah. And um and you went to school. He with did him? a movie called Submarine. Uh -huh. uh, I went to yeah college with mm -hmm. him. And uh, yeah, so the first week we really liked each other. I remember, I remember he came to my room and we were both so angry about the place we spent the whole time standing up. <laughs> <laughs> we literally never sat down, and we must have been in there for a while. Just ranting at each yeah, other? Yeah, just kind of venting of, what is this place, and it, how do we navigate this? It was freshman year? Years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, is it a four-year program? Three like, years. It's three years? Yeah. But so we, that, we wrote a lot together while we were there, and that's... But three years as opposed privilege. to four, it must be more intensive. Like, I'm trying yeah. to figure out how uh, an education at that level is structured. I mean, how how does it work? What was your major? English. And and what what do you I mean how is it different than also it's our... not a major it's just that you one thing all mm -hmm. your eggs in one basket but you didn't do any uh, language or anything like that you no. got literature whole thing the whole thing yep did they uh, assume that you knew French or anything else did you it's have to worse than that they, this is like imagine you're, you you have all these hang ups class hang ups going into a place that you feel that you don't socially or mentally belong in and the first the first semester was. Uh, on uh, old English, you know, 
uh, Gawain, Charlie, Gawain yeah. and the Green Knight, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've never read Old English. You know, lots of these, lots of the kids that have been to these private schools. The Canterbury they, Tales are Old English. Yeah. Yeah. But when you can't, you can't, that's a different language. That's sure. halfway to a different language. Yeah. So I was sitting in a room, like, for these first lessons, yeah. looking at this page of something I did not understand. Yeah. With these just letters swimming around in front of your eyes, thinking, yeah. I, I definitely should not be here. Yeah. But, but none of the other kids knew either. No, I mean, they like, knew, because they'd been taught it at school. Oh, so they, they done, like, at Canterbury Tales school. at school. Yeah. Right. Canterbury Tales. Yeah. Because I, re- I majored in literature, and I read that stuff. Yeah. And I'm not sure what I took from it. Uh-huh. Well, probably the sense of this isn't as good as anyone thinks it is. Who wrote The Green Knight? That was Gawain the Green Knight. Because I remember having to read that one. Yeah, is that I, a Chaucer I, one, too? Or no, no, no. I, I think, John, I don't know. John Donne, were you going to say? No, no, John Donne was a lot later. He was yeah. that poet who was just shitting himself in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. There were some good there were some good ones. I enjoyed some of that. But yeah, I, Blake, I, I liked Blake. Blake was great. Yeah. The Sunflower. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the lamb, yeah. the you know, the paintings. He mm-hmm. was nuts. He sure was. Did you like was that your focus, Blake? No, I like I like Blake. Yeah, well I like yeah, I liked him the best. Yeah. I liked Beckett. Yeah. I liked Beckett when I was there. That's much later. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I skimmed the canon of English literature. <laughs> Just dipped in here and there. But Blake was one of those guys where, like, I always felt when I was studying that stuff that, like, God, it really is amazing, but I can't seem to put it into context, and uh-huh. I can't see because, like, Blake is the simplicity of it is is fascinating. But if you don't put him into a historical context, yeah. uh, you know, it's just going to be like, well, that's cute. Yeah, and that's then, right. That's right. And it, and it's very difficult to really, you know, get into it. Yeah, you have to. You definitely have to understand what it meant to be as crazy as he was at that time. Yeah, and to be of, printing this stuff on your own and yes. making your own paintings and and printing those. Yeah, and just have to think up. on a human level of what his neighbours must have thought of him being yeah. naked in a tree, as he often was. <laughs> That's tough to live next to now. Imagine how it was then. Yeah, but they were. Uh, my so- neighbor's a poet. He's just don't talk to him. He's just he's fine. He's fine. He's actually harmless. Yeah, yeah. but he must have. I, oh, I mean, this is all available information. I'm not going to sit here and speculate about Blake. But there are those. But people like Blake enable you to appreciate, certainly in comedy, uh, because you 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 run into this a lot. That the kind of tormented, you know, gifted genius that may not survive his talent. Yeah. Like, you know, that's one of the great things yeah. about being in the arts is that if you're in it long enough, there's a, a guy will come along and you would be like, oh, well, yeah, he is great, but we'll see what happens. Well, no, but also I think I really like, I really responded to knowing how much he was suffering when he was doing it. That's what I liked about the Sistine Chapel so much because, yeah. you know, reading this stuff about just how miserable he was well, he for did, a he decade. Did, Michael Angelo he hated did, it. He didn't even think he could do it. I don't, yeah. I, I, is he, I don't even think he was the first choice. No, and no, he, and he had doubts. He had religious he doubts. Was, you know, it was just, the, the whole thing. Was and he an wasn't a painter by, by personal trade. Personal pain. Yeah. And I, so, I loved that. that in jo- the same way that I loved in that, you know, the comedian documentary of Seinfeld. I loved seeing how much he was suffering to put that set together. I hate to compare them so quickly. Again, I'm dipping in. You're okay, skipping yeah, yeah, yeah. Like from Blake to Becky. Yeah. It's just it's the the, yeah. the fundamental yeah. essence from Michelangelo to Jerry Steinfeld. That, I, you know, even even as a comic. <laughs> well, guy, you but... re- you really put the brakes on there, didn't you? Uh, I, I get it thematically, but I'm going to have well, to but, throw a flag on that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, because with with Michelangelo, like he was proving himself to a, to a god mean. that he was on the fence with, and yes. and Blake was sort of like, I'm just going to build my own gods. Yeah. You know, I'm going to create my own mythology. Uh-huh. You know, fuck the ones that are established. Right. I have my problems with theirs, so I'm going to create a mythological universe that I've decided upon. Yeah, and and support it. And and Jerry Seinfeld was sort of like, yeah, couches. You know, I yeah. I, 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 mean, but, I understand. But, but, he, but I, the those, suffering of the artist. But it was still, like I think there's even a bit in it where he's talking about a duck joke, and mm-hmm. he's saying I can't get my duck joke to work, mm-hmm. and it was clearly causing him pain. Sure. And I identify with, I, but, but, uh, to be honest, I identify more with that than I identify with Michelangelo struggling over the system. Well, of course you do. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and that's why we're comedians. Yeah. We're not painting anything. Uh-huh. We're getting away with a fucking trick. Yeah, that's yeah, right. There's, there's not going to be, it's you know. It's a card trick without the skills to actually yeah. do a card trick. Yeah, I mean, we're still talking about Michelangelo. How many years later? <laughs> you know how many people are going to be talking about us in 400 years? Exactly. Yeah. There's there's going to be a lot of digital detritus everywhere, and some guy in a room will find like, yeah. what was this period of time where yeah. these people thought this was important? Yeah. <laughs> this seems very insular. I guess it doesn't really. It, it was it was literally nothing, wasn't it? <laughs> and and Beck, like Beckett, I never read. Oh, he's good. Yeah. 
But he, uh, I mean, I, I can't even pretend to, as I usually do, to know things about him other than uh, Waiting for Godot. It, 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 he was, he didn't, he also wrote prose as well. Yeah. And he wrote, poems? He wrote a novel, yeah. I didn't like his po- poetry as much. Yeah. I mean, it was too difficult. Yeah. But his, uh, his novels are pretty crazy. Did you like, were you um, an Ezra Pound guy or who were mm-hmm. the other poets and modern poets? Nobody? What made you like Beckett? I like Philip Larkin. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, yeah. your parents. He's, yeah, are, he's yeah. he is funny. I agree with that. And then almost everyone will say that's really depressing. But I've I found his utter unremitting misery quite funny. No, I, I, the, the 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 I the, your parents fucked you up. That that's his piece. That's his famous one. Yeah. Yeah, but like you know, I I ordered a book of his stuff, and I'm like, well, that's the other thing about us as comics is that misery is hilarious. Yeah. Is that like oh, maybe you're God. taking this too seriously? This was I did this. There was a, a really jarring moment of that. That, that uh, you know, uh, McSweeney, eight two six McSweeney. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I went to. Um, I, I like to do a little bit of work with their literacy thing when I can with Sarah Val, who's a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we went to this thing. We were talking to these kids uh, about these stories that they were writing, yeah. and they were talking about you know what was happening to them at school. And this one uh, kid, like fifteen, was say, uh, started saying, "Oh, this is no, this is my idea for a thing." Uh, you know, there's. There's a lot of cutting going on at my school at the moment, you know, people cutting themselves and, um, uh, you know, just to, you know, to, to show people. It's, it's, it's happening more and I, I want to write a story about it. And without thinking, I was listening, went, yeah, that could, there's something funny in that. That could be funny. <laughs> and then I hear this kind of, <gasps> and it's just Sarah kind of putting her hand on my arm going, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's, <laughs> oh, I'm not saying it. Definitely, I'm saying it could be fun if you wanted. If you wanted to take it that way, yeah, that a, sounds like it could be funny. Yeah, there's a way to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How old was the kid? Like fifteen. Uh, not not old enough to, to process. Yeah, that. I, I, and look, I've, I've I've pulled back pretty quickly. But there was a moment where I was, yeah, that's the fact I have that instinct is definitely a problem, and not just in this room. Yeah, in yeah. every room. <laughs> But you just should have taken one step further. Let's beat it out. I mean, what's the yeah, setup? Exactly. So the guy's cutting himself. Oh, come on. No, I'll, show, let me, I'll show you. Yeah. Don't use the real names, because then that's going to make me feel terrible. <laughs> it's it's emotional slapstick in a way, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, sure. Isn't it? Yeah, I you, guess it isn't. If you really take it over the top and there's blood spraying all over the place and the kid just wants yeah. attention. And- yeah. Come to think of it, that was, uh, that was honestly the last time I did something like that, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> not, yeah. not good with the putting yeah. kids, uh, you know, guiding they, them. Well, they're yeah. serious. The kids, you know, those kids were, t- they were serious. Yeah. yeah well, there's, I nothing, think, there's nothing wrong with I that. I think I was a pretty serious kid. So, uh, so I believe that. in Cambridge then, you uh, you were part of a theater group or a comedy group? Comedy group, yeah. And you just wrote your own comedy? And- yeah, we wrote And, you know, Richard and I did uh, two-man shows together mm-hmm. uh, all the time that we were there. And, were they uh, ridiculous? Were you doing yeah, uh, your, silly. your version of G- Godot? Or were you, were no, you- no, no, nothing as meaningful as that. More, they were, they more, were just uh, silly. Like py- Python-esque? Yeah. 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 Were they your guys, Python? Python I loved. I loved a guy called Armando Anucci. Yeah. Very much. And who else? Who were the stand-ups that you liked? Yeah, I, um, I loved uh, Dylan Moran, Stuart Lee. I loved American stand-ups. Stuart Lee, that guy changed my life. I, I talked to him. He changed my life. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because I, you know... Please I was... say that he pushed you out the front of a bus or something. <laughs> there was a bus coming down. He dived in front. Actually, I'm doubting no, it. No, we played catch, and uh-huh. I caught everyone. Uh, no, I, I had not met him, and uh, Hari Kondabolu turned me on to him because he knew I would like him, yeah. and, and I got sort of obsessed with watching him. And then when I was in England, I interviewed him. And his journey as a comic, uh, because it, there's there's very few people that have as unique an approach as he does, mm-hmm. and and just um, the, he's not going to do it any other way. Yeah. And it's very deliberate, and it's got a very uh, specific pacing. And uh, when he told me about quitting comedy, yeah, he was he stopped for a long time, specifically because the audience he was he was he aggravated. The, yeah, he lost the stomach for the fight. Right. But then, like, the the thing that, that turned him, that when he came back, the fight became different because his the way he saw people who didn't get him uh, did not anger him. He he became empathetic to their issue. Yeah, that they, he's right. Well, yeah. well, that's right, but that's a big moment. And, yeah. and him talking about that changed my perspective on it. That, like, basically he was like, I, you've made the wrong choice yeah. tonight. And uh, and I, there's nothing I'm going to do. Yeah, that is a baseball in the face moment. But it is it is true, <laughs> right? It is true. And he's uh, do you know him? I do. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are pals. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. But he was one of the guys you were watching because he's been around for a long time. He's yeah, he's been around the, for a long uh, time. The, so. the 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 original sort of uh, British new wave. Yeah, I like yeah. him. I like Chris Morris, and then uh, Munnery. You dig Munnery? I love Munnery. Yes. I interviewed him too. He's an interesting guy. Yeah, he's, you know what's he's interesting really about him is that, like, like you know, in a 
in the world we live in, you know, his comedy is so yeah, specific and unto himself. Yeah. That like I love the idea that he does pieces like in parks and things occasionally. Yeah. Well, he has his one man restaurant thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was doing that in Edinburgh. Yeah. And I think it's lost on a lot of people, but I like yeah. that he continues the. Fight. But it's found on enough people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So w- when did you first uh, get up there and do the thing? Uh, well, I, you know, I was I wrote, wrote comedy at university, and then I tried stand up uh, just before I left, and I loved it, and I. So I, I was doing stand up ever since. And you were right. Do you? Uh, do you, you seem fairly uh, quick. Quick. Uh, yeah. It, it, it extemporaneously yeah. Uh, riffing on things. Were, yeah. did, were you a guy that wrote things out, or you just kind of ran with uh, it? Yeah, a bit of both. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Bullet points, and then talk talk around it, and then write on stage. And and you entered the uh, the London comedy scene. That was where did you move yeah. to London? Yeah, I moved to London after college, and then. Uh, and you did those places, Junglers yeah. and the Comedy Store? No, not Junglers. No, no, not those. Um, they were a little more... Uh, uh, those. Were, uh, it was a slight separation, because that was quite, those were quite chain clubs, so there's a lot of stag and hen nights or, you know, bachelor, bachelorette parties. It's hard to... Stag and hen. It's hard to do anything but... That almost sound, makes it control. sound like a good thing. Yeah. Yes, you're right. It's, it is giving those evenings charm that they do not deserve. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Um, uh, so no, I did kind of uh, more uh, just small clubs. There's a lot of clubs, a lot of uh, like backroom pubs where there are gigs and. I but but with uh, more groovier kids, a hipper scene. I don't know if it's it's safer. I don't know if perhaps. it's quite the yeah, quite the same. Uh, yeah, I started off with Daniel Kitson, who's my you know he's my best friend. Is he? Yeah. He's an interesting guy. He's got an interesting ethic about him. Yeah. Everything just dissipates into the ether. There's no reason to save anything. Yeah. This is the know, moment. There is a reason to say. I think it is, you know, he knows there's a reason to save stuff. It's just how, how, how exactly to do it. What, they have equipment for that. Right you, you, yeah, you, you, yeah no, I think he, he records stuff. Does he? He just doesn't. Yeah, I think he's just going to decide on when and how to distribute it. Is he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I've, I've met him a couple of times. I've, I, I saw him... Uh, where, oh, in uh, in Melbourne, I saw his oh, yeah? the one man show about the 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 guy who moves into the house. So this is one of the story shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, it was great. I mean, yeah. he's he's a very interesting performer, but he refuses to uh, to to uh, leave evidence of himself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he will he not. No trace. He would not be sitting in the chair. He's the artistic in. pimpernel. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 interesting. He's a very unique guy. He's your best friend. Yeah, and I know Andy Zaltzman too. Yeah. Yeah, and you've worked with him podcast. for years. Yeah, for years. I've worked with Andy for years, and we do a podcast now every uh, every week. It's doing well. The Bugle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've, and I've seen. I, yeah, I've I've done his show. I did his show in Edinburgh. It was one of the highlights of a, a very horrible, horrendous month of my life. I remember that was just after I'd met you. Yeah. I met you in Aspen, and I think I said to you, "You have to go to Edinburgh. You have to go. You're going to love it." You're the guy that did that. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in Aspen, that was what year was that? The end of it? When when was that? Wow. Yeah, I, I think it might actually have been the last one. Yeah, well, I went to uh, to Edinburgh, but I was just in the middle of the divorce and everything, and, and I was not. Yeah. I didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you were in a great personal place <laughs> to take on <laughs> everything that Edinburgh had, as well as your how many times? Lawyer had. Yeah, how many times have you done it? A lot of times. I did it every year until I moved over here. But that was the thing, right? That being from the uh, the UK and yeah, being you from structure the, your year around Edinburgh, and you try to build an audience there. Yeah, you try to build an audience there, and you write a new hour each year to do it up there. Did you build an audience there? I, I guess technically I built an audience, but it was you know it did. When I left, there was it was not huge. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I I built an audience from almost no one to some people, not well, from no one to wh- the world. Why do you think that you didn't uh, surface in 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 the UK? I don't know. I guess you know I I, wor- I, I made a living out of it. I wrote on radio shows and uh, so on. And but does it like I left in in the UK? Doesn't everyone with a little bit of talent and persistence eventually end up you know doing something because it's a fairly yeah. intimate media landscape? I think that's kind of if you have the tenacity to just not stop. Yeah. Then yeah, I think there is. I think there is. That is partially true. Yeah. That it is a slight meritocracy yeah and it, it, well that's good it, it yes. certainly isn't that here yeah it's yeah. too big yeah it's too big here. so but, but what do you uh attribute it to in the sense okay you were making you know you were writing on shows and stuff yeah, but doing, why uh, didn't you become a comedy star in uh, uh i can't answer that um I can, i'm sure you've thought of it no really i got, you know i was i was pretty happy just writing okay. doing, doing what i was doing but here you're a fucking star what you have just stretched that term to semantic breaking point what do you mean? 
I, I don't think you could honestly use the dictionary definition of the word star with me. Really? Yes. I, I'm on TV a bit sometimes. Right. But people know you. You're, yeah, you're, some the, you're people, the, Bri- some the British know fellow that <laughs> hands us our ass when that's necessary. Right. And I think the very fact that that is who I am, the British fellow on that TV show, <laughs> not John Oliver. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I, as you should be. Yeah. And, you know, I know we, uh, that no one talks too explicitly about John Stewart, but you have a good relationship with yeah, him. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I deal with the, there, there's the, I, there's two things that happen on these microphones. There's mm-hmm. the, the Lorne Michael syndrome and yes. occasionally oh, the yeah. John Stewart syndrome. Yeah, I've not met Lorne, I'm afraid, so. Right, but, uh, but nobody has anything bad to say about Lorne Michaels. Uh huh. And no matter how much I poke and prod because yeah. of my one shitty experience. Your, your emotional archaeology act. Yeah. There must be some, it's yeah. shit yeah. rock. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it is the same with John Stewart. But, but your relationship with him uh, obviously has, has spanned years now. Yes, yeah, six years. Because, you know, I have my own history with him, and I don't want to bring any baggage to this. But do you uh, you have a, a friendly relationship? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's probably not the answer that you're looking for. No, he 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 has a good uh, a good uh, factory over there. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's making brilliant. making good product. Yeah. He's a great comic. He he's, he's uh, a great comic. He's a great manager. Yeah, he's uh he's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. But there's no problem. Do you want to compare him to Michelangelo, or <laughs> <laughs> or are you just going to leave that on Seinfeld? Is John painting the Sistine Chapel? I guess he's not the Sistine Chapel. He's probably carving David. David's interesting. <laughs> I didn't see him. I didn't actually see him. Why didn't you go see David? Uh, I think I ran out. I was only there for four and a half, five days. Yeah. So I did. Coliseum in the four and one day. He's got very Eight big hands. Big day. hands and big feet. Really? Yeah. They're they're actually uh, they're they're larger than mm. they should be. And a big head. But it's pretty stunning because he's just standing there. Yeah. And, you know, you look at the picture of David, you know, your entire life in books. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, there yeah, it's is. right there. There that's, he is. That's the amazing thing about Rome is like yeah. postcards, pictures. You know, you've seen yeah. all this shit. Yeah. And, you know, you've only seen it the size of my cup right here. Yeah. And then when you see it in person, you're like, hey, I love when things live up to, you know, to yeah. why they're photographed so often. Where you're like, oh, it, it, it's horrible. Like, like the seven wonders of the world. Like, you know, you, it's easy to condescend Niagara Falls. But if you ever stand before yeah, them, not you're like, until you feel this it. pays off. Yeah. No one goes to the Grand Canyon and yeah. says, eh, you know. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen that yet. You haven't? No, I really want to see that. Isn't there a, an angle that you can get the show to pay for for you to what, go out there? To go and make fun of it? Yeah. <laughs> Look yeah. at this big crack. Well, no, but there's a, there actually, a, a, I believe, a, a, an Indian tribe who had uh, rights to the land built some sort of very interesting mm-hmm. bit of... Uh, of a, of, I don't know, a structure where you, it sits on the edge and you can walk out. Yes, I saw, I've seen, I've seen that online. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That it looks great. It seems like you could mock something there. Well, that is the, <laughs> that is the, one of the odd, odd things about moments of working at the Daily Show is that you yeah. find yourself at moments of genuine history mm-hmm. with the sole purpose of slightly undermining it. Yeah. And it hurts you? No, it just, it feels, no, it doesn't hurt. It, it feels odd. If yeah. I was at the uh, inauguration. Yeah. Uh, uh, President Obama's inauguration, and that you know there is, and that moment it was extremely cold, and there is nothing but a warm feeling of positivity and hope. And uh, you know the stuff I was doing was a little more, a little more cynical. Now, in I, I stand by all of what we were doing after the fact to actually do it there. You could definitely sense that this is a little weird to yeah. come here to make fun of this. Sure, sure, but and you're yeah, a guy that has no respect job. for the Queen, so I mean, well, it's right. not hard for you to. It's not hard. To... <laughs> That's what I saw. I have a picture of the Queen in my wallet. Just yeah. open it up. Still nothing. Close it up. Okay, we're good. Let's go. <laughs> to, to mock the charade and uh, and uh, pomp and circumstance of yeah. uh, these these horrible people that yeah. uh, are supposed to command our respect uh-huh. as they just ruin the world for people that are trying yeah. their hardest yeah. to get by. Uh huh. I understand it. Are those the new words to the American national anthem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should be. But I mean, you do come from. Uh, you have transcended. Uh, you know, a background that would in- entitle you to that anger yeah. in, in some respects. Yeah. I mean, I think that coming from the class system, you do have a, a bit of, of conscious spite against uh, the establishment. It's there all the time. Right. Yeah. I, it's a side of myself that is quite ugly and 
that I, I think it's hard for Americans to understand. I have American friends who, do, who can get quite frustrated when you feel that when they, uh, you know, feel that kind of chippiness, that class chippiness, which just doesn't translate here in the same visceral way. Well, and that's because I find the, it really hard to let go. Well, the established powers of this country have have gone above and beyond to make sure that no one ever addresses yeah. class. Yeah. And and gives everyone this ridiculous hope that they will transcend their lot in life, which is unique to them. Yeah, because but people buy into that because it's a that's a great dream. Yeah, but I mean, on some level, the class system at least enables people to know their place. <laughs> that I think was the aristocracy in Britain's point. <laughs> Listen, I know you're hungry, I know you're living in filth, but if I may give you one redeeming feature to your current situation. You know your place, do you not? <laughs> and it is here. You're exactly where you need to be. Get away from my outfit. That's, now, don't touch my robe. <laughs> well, exactly. But yeah. on some level, the uh, and I'm, not, I'm obviously not defending the class system, but I'm saying that the fury that comes from that. Yeah, it's, and, in, you, it, it's in you deep. It's a, it's, a, it's a poisonous thing. You've got to be a little bit careful with it because it's, it's in you. Yeah, it, it's deep. In, in you have to deep. actually watch your tongue? Well, more than... No, no, not watch your tongue. You have to watch how much... You don't want it to consume you. You don't want to have that chip on your shoulder your whole life. When here, it's just sort of like, someday I'm going to get what that millionaire has. Or right. or, or, or there's that uh, the idea that everybody in America you know, has this, this entitlement and this shot, at least at the disposition of somebody who's, yeah. who's winning. Yeah, I think... That, right. And, and, and in Britain, you don't, you know, no, you're not even entitled to that. No, there's mu there's much more inherent negativity if you're British, which is that, uh, well, they don't want me to have it, so I'm never going to get it. Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. Let's go to the, the football game. Right, let's go. Let's go, go and have a drink. Well, you've transcended it, and and uh, that's not true. No, you've done all right for yourself. Thanks. And uh, the show that I did with you, the Mark Marin show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. We should plug that. Mark, uh, yeah, the Mark Maron. John Oliver's New York stand-up show starts on July the 20th for six weeks at midnight on Comedy Central. It's starting on July the 20th against Batman. Yeah, and I, uh, I appreciate you having me on you know, twice. There was, yeah, there was, do you, do you remember before you went on stage this time, do you remember you were quite in the midst of, like, literally just before I'm about to bring you on this time, you were in the midst of, you know, your regular yeah. implosion. Yeah. Of, I don't know. I got about, nothing. I don't know about that. I can't do this. <laughs> I remember taking you by the shoulders yeah. and saying you can do this mark because you're a professional comedian yeah. and you're good at this yeah and you know what I, at that time I, I was thinking about it afterwards and i thought I, I felt like putting i was putting my hands on like a little league baseball player and now you told that story <laughs> it felt like saying you can do this kid yeah, yeah. you can do this you get can, out there and you take some cuts yeah, so. yeah you can catch that ball catch this time that ball. And we yeah. did all right. And even if, if that means you catch it in your mouth, you've still caught it. <laughs> yeah, it's actually more impressive <laughs> if you catch it in your mouth. Just don't let it bounce off your face this time. <laughs> and we did it. Yeah. Well, thank you for the pep talk. Yeah. And thanks for coming by. You are welcome. All right, that is it. How is that for you? Come on, man. Come on. That was a fucking fun interview. Any interview where there's a little bit of talk about William Blake... That's great. I really appreciate John coming by. And as you know, uh, his uh, John Oliver stand-up show, I will be on it. He will be on it, obviously. But I will be on it. I don't know what episode. But I love that guy. Okay? Can't say it enough. Please go to WTFPod.com for all your WTF Pod needs. Pick yourself up, uh, you know, uh, get yourself some merch, some T-shirts, some stickers, whatever you need. Kick in a few shekels. Get the premium app. Get the app at all. See who's been on the show. Get on the email list. Pick up the Mark and Tom show. Pick up my CD. That's still available. Do anything you want to do. Comment. Don't be a dick. Seriously, I don't understand what it is with some people. You know, it, it's, it, sometimes it's just what women guess. I'm not, uh, not on board with some of you commenters. I do read them occasionally, and uh, I find some of you disappointing. More than you find me disappointing for one episode. You can you can put one comma comment on there, and I'm disappointed with you as a person. So that's what you're up against. All right, but do go to wtfpod.com. Come to Zany's tomorrow night, uh, July 20 and 21st.